Hey everyone, I'm super excited about today's guest. I have former NFL quarterback Kyle Bowler um, here with me. Um, Kyle is a former first round draft pick, um, drafted by the Baltimore Ravens, um, and uh, entrepreneur of himself, uh, started a nutrition bar, and now is currently um, working in real estate. So super excited to jump in this conversation, Kyle. Yeah, thanks for having me. So Kyle, I, I know you had a, a pretty awesome career in NFL yourself. Um, before that, you were at Cal. Um, can you just share um, just some of your favorite experiences, either in college or in the NFL? Um, it can either be games that you had. Um, it, it doesn't have to be uh, on the field stuff. It would be off the field or memories that you had. Yeah, yeah for sure. Teammates. Uh, I would say probably college would be a big game, Cal-Stanford game, my senior year. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't think we had beat Stanford in probably like, I don't know, like eight or nine years maybe. Um, but the year before my senior year, our junior year, we were one in 10. And so it was like a brutal year. So we were like, I mean, I was like, oh, I don't even want to play football anymore. This is like, this is crazy or transfer or something. Yeah. And uh, so Jeff Tepper came in and we had a successful year. And that, that big game, we ended up beating Stanford. And the, all the students rushed the field. And I got hoisted up like it was like a mosh pit, and they're like carrying us, you know, carrying me around the thing. And they ended up taking down the the goalposts, took it out of the stadium, the students, and then walked. There's a street called Bancroft in Berkeley. It kind of runs, you know, up and down uh, by the, where the college campus is. And they literally took the goalposts and walked all the way down with the goalposts, like down Bancroft. I mean, my first game, I started as a rookie. Um, I got thrown in right away. So I got to start in Pittsburgh, mm -hmm. and I just remember Joey Porter looking at me like, dude, I'm gonna break you right now. <laughs> and sure enough, he did. Uh, but it was great, you know, you run out there on Heinz Field, you know, I'm 20 years old, and you know, I'm starting quarterback in the NFL um, as a rookie, which a lot of guys don't start as a rookie. Mm -hmm. I played nine years, you know, I, I probably, I couldn't wait to not play just so I could like play golf and relax. Yeah. And like the day that I retired, it was like, it just, just something about it, like you feel like you're so free. Yeah. You know, I played tackle football since I was six years old. Right. I've always had a coach tell me what to do. And, you know, you've always just been so constricted. So like that day, you're just kind of like, wow, what am I going to do today? And then you go through like the, you know, is it, what am I eating for lunch today? What are we going to do for dinner, honey? What are you, you know, it's like you just have all this free time. You know, it's crazy. I, I don't actually recommend being retired at 30. Yeah. Uh, but that's for another conversation. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I just uh, you know I just stopped playing football, and that's when I really started kind of kind of do that deep dive into what was next. Mm -hmm. You know, when you've done something for so long and it's been kind of all you've known, you you kind of look and say like, hey, there's actually more to life, and there's other things that I'm excited about outside of just you know, yeah, I want to throw in a leather ball. I think uh, I mean it's the first thing you said, right? So like, it's hard for other people to understand it because everybody. Everybody is so in tune with money, mm -hmm. you know, so it's hard for a person to sit here and go, well, dude, you're going to turn down like, you know, these guys nowadays, like you're going to turn down like 10 million bucks a year just mm -hmm. because like you're, you know, you're just kind of tired of it. And it's like, it's like, yeah, you, you do because like, it's a mental, physical, like it's a battle. Yeah. So like, I mean, there's so many, I mean, there's times in my career where it's like, once you don't have the media on your side and this, and the city you're playing in doesn't, you know, like you. Mm -hmm you know, and you're, you're still a human being. So it's like, you still have feelings and like, you know, especially if, like some people are probably better at than other people, but you know, I listened to like a lot about like what people wrote and said, and like, mm -hmm. you know, my advice, I think I told Jared Goff this when I first met him, I'm like, dude, just don't even read a thing like good or bad. Just like, just stay narrowly focused on what you're doing. Don't worry about what anybody says, because as soon as you're done playing, like they're going to move right on to the next guy. Mm -hmm. But it's so hard to do that as a player. So um, you go through all these things and so it's like you're willing to kind of give that up because of what you have to go through like mm -hmm. there's no amount of money that'd be worth like me having to deal with this anymore so like in Andrew Luck's case you know I mean you know you rehab for 15 hours a day or whatever it is 10 hours a day and then you go out and you get hurt again you do it for an, I mean it just becomes draining like mm -hmm. as a person you like you have a family and you have this and like it's hard to be happy around your wife it's hard to be so it's like finally you said okay well I'm financially pretty darn solid. Right. Like I, I am somewhat healthy. Like these are all going to creep up on me when I'm 50 and 60. So that's going to, you know, that sucks. So I might as well just kind of, you know, make that decision. So, you know, good for him that he was able to kind of 
turn away that kind of money and do that kind of stuff because yeah. that's that was important to him. He kind of knew what he wanted. So one thing I, I really wanted to dive into is kind of your entrepreneurial ventures, one of which being um, you founded a, a company that created a nutrition bar mm -hmm. um, called Five Bar. Yeah. So my last year uh, was 2011, I believe, and I signed with the Chargers for a day. Mm -hmm. And I woke up in the middle of the night and I told my wife, I said, hey, listen, like I had practice. So I signed the contract on Friday, practiced with them, and then stayed in the hotel that night, started reading the playbook. And then I called my wife like at like three in the morning. I was like, hey, I'm, I, I don't want to do this anymore. Like I'm just burnt out of football. Like, mm -hmm. I don't want to learn, you know, this new offense. I don't want to go in there with four stringers and, you know, get the heck beat out, beat out of me. Like I live in this town, like I'm good. Like, and she was, you know, very supportive and said like, absolutely, like only you know, and like whatever is gonna make you happy, you do. But at the same time, my father-in-law was battling cancer. Mm -hmm. And my wife was pregnant with our son, and he was at Kaiser Permanente, which was like just right across from where the Chargers uh, practice facility was. So uh, he, him doing, he wasn't doing really well at the time. Like he was like a hundred, I mean he's like a two hundred thirty pound guy, twenty pound guy that was like a buck seventy, mm. just doing terrible. He done some chemo, chemo, done some radiation. He had like basic tongue cancer, and I had a buddy that. Um, this was probably, I don't know how many, maybe a couple weeks later after I retired, I was playing golf at, and uh, the guy's like, hey, like, I told him about my father-in-law, he's like, hey, there's this guy, his name's Don Tolman, and he's like a holistic healer, mm -hmm. and I think he's actually going to be out here in a couple weeks, I'm like, I really would love to get you guys uh, dialed up with him and connected, and I was like, sure, like, I mean, we're, like, we're, you know, we'll do anything right now. Yeah. He was so powerful when he told him about food and, like, kind of medicine and all this kind of stuff that... My father-in-law like made the courageous decision to like throw away all of his medications. So like he took away all of his medications and threw them all away. Yeah. And he started getting on this guy's program. And within about like five months, the I would say between five and six months, he had a golf ball sized tumor, maybe even bigger, like on his neck. And within like five to six months, that thing was slowly like going away, like completely. Wow. And after about a year, I think it was completely gone. Like how? And so we were just kind of like, wow, this is like this is crazy. Yeah. You know? Yeah. This is nuts. Um, and so we just really became, you know, we love this guy. Like we became friends with him, obviously, you know, watching this and learning. And he had told us about this, uh, this ancient recipe that he had discovered, but you know, having that business sense and the entrepreneurial sense, I was like, I wonder if this guy would ever, cause it was in like a granola form. Mm -hmm. I was like, I wonder if this guy would ever let me take this recipe and like, if you'd ever share the recipe with me. And like, there's a way I could bind it together. So like, it was not messy. It was just in like in a bar, you mm -hmm. know, like being locker rooms, different things. Like, you know, it's just easier to eat. So I approached him and had a conversation with him. And he's like, yeah, absolutely. I'd love for you to do that. So I worked out a little deal with him and I just kind of got him like going from like not knowing this industry whatsoever, you know, which it's probably good that I did not Yeah. Cause a lot of times after I did it, people were like, why would you jump into like the most saturated business ever? <laughs> you know? So I, I, uh, so I, I just set out and started started to make this bar. So it's basically, uh, it's dates, raisins, prunes, figs, cashews, pecans, walnuts, um, flax seeds, pumpkin seeds, sesame seeds, quinoa, and sea salt. I probably left something out, but that's the gist of it. It's like 14 ingredients. Um, I landed a Sprouts account, all national. Holy Before, God. I mean, literally just launched the bar and I got 300 and some Sprouts, <laughs> which was awesome in the beginning. I'm like thinking, this is great. You know, like I got 300 stores. So, uh, you know, things were going good and my business was, you know, steadily kind of going and I kind of had a decision to make if I was going to be, uh, if I was going to run the business myself and hire people, uh, which is going to be more capital, or I could probably sub take this business and kind of give it to somebody else and kind of okay. let them run and then work a deal with them. So I met, I met this company, I'm not going to mention their name, but okay. I met them in Texas and they had five national sales reps. They had relationships with all the brokers across the country. And I was like, all right, this sounds like a good deal. Like, I'm just gonna work with them. And unfortunately, that was a bad decision. There's a lot of things that I would go back and change because our bar was a fruit, nut, and seed bar. It wasn't a protein bar. Mm -hmm. And we were a higher priced bar, so we were more like a $3 bar. Mm -hmm. And what I found was that people that are paying $3 for a, a nutrition bar, they're very interested in the back and the ingredients. Hmm. And not so much the ingredients, more so how much protein am I getting? How much sugar does this have? And my bar was the opposite. So you see, people think high sugar is bad for you, but realistically, like real sugar is good for you. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. So our bar had 28 grams of sugar, mm -hmm. but that's from the dates, raisins, right, fruits, and the fruits. There's yeah, no yeah. added sugar. It's just no, it's all natural sugar. Mm -hmm. um, and then we were a little bit lower in protein because we didn't, I didn't add a bunch of like pea protein or anything in there. It was all natural. So um, we were kind of swimming upstream with that. And people were kind of coming downstream saying sugar's bad, high protein, no sugar. Yeah. You know, I've always kind of taken the approach that you got to kind of, to separate yourself, you got you to take some chances. You got to take smart chances too. I mean, realistic ones. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you know, I would, I by no means like lost everything. And you hear these stories, athletes that threw all their money into this thing, you know, well, video games or this or that. And yeah. then now they're left with nothing. Like I would, you know, I wouldn't jeopardize my family for that right uh, but I also think it's very important to, to for entrepreneurs to be passionate about something like I was very pat I mean I'm, I'm still very passionate about it mm -hmm. and when you're passionate about something it, it's just so much easier to get behind and to sell so like when I would do these like demos I mean I would, I would go to Sprouts Markets and these de I would be sitting there and be like oh you, you know I'd, I'd have some people say like oh you're, you played football like, yeah and he's like, you know they're probably thinking like oh this guy's broke he's yeah. <laughs> He's doing a demo at a store. You know. It's like, no, I did it because like I wanted the feedback from my customers, and like I was proud of my product. And I used to love people coming up to me and saying like, because everybody looked at the bars like they'd be sitting on the counter, and there's and and there most people like go like, oh, pff, they spit them out, you know. Mm -hmm. Like every, I'm talking like 95 percent of the people that tried our bar would be like, they'd always say, wow, that's actually really good. It was always that's actually really good because yeah. they're so used to something not tasting good. Right. And I'm like, well, it's real food. Like, it's not, you know. <laughs> And so that was cool, you know, I, I like that. But the problem was I never saw it in the, the sell through because I was on the bottom shelf behind an end cap <laughs> and I was on sale all the time. And I, you know, so there's like all those things like you have to, you have to have a lot of capital. You have to come out with a massive marketing plan. Right. Um, and it's very expensive to educate people. Yeah. You know, to get people out of their, their ways. Yeah. The other thing, and this will be the kind of the last thing that we touch on. The other thing that, that you're interested in is just, is real estate. Yeah. Um, can you talk a little bit about that space. I guess to sum it up, like what we do at our company um, at Acre, it's called Acre Investment, um, is we find the inefficiencies in the market and we capitalize on those. Right. And it's fun. It's cool. It's like kind of, it's kind of like putting a game a game plan together for football. Yeah. You know, you're 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 going against a team and you know they're going to be changing things up. You got to change things up. You got to kind of react on the go. And um, if you're one step ahead of them, which you got to be in real estate, kind of one step ahead of the market, mm -hmm. then you're going to win the game. And, in real estate that'd be is to make money so you know currently right now we are we're looking at you know buying some shopping centers you know mainly in the midwest and um not so much in california stuff's just so expensive here in california it's hard yeah. to make money on some of that stuff um but giving small business owners opportunities to to own their own buildings instead of you know paying rent like why waste rent like when you can just own the thing right and then when you get done with your business you can either decide to keep your business because you own that building or you know sell it to the next or, or, or keep it and make you know cash flow yeah. Kyle my my closing question that I always ask my guests is just the best uh, life lesson that sports has taught them so I'm just curious what what that is for you yeah I think for me I mean I I like the quote be humble be hungry mm. um, you know especially playing quarterback like there's really good days and there's really bad days and sometimes you can you know, in the good days, it's very easy to like think you're like way up here. Um, but I just always took the approach that like I'm no better than anybody else. And the more, the, you know, being humble, but then always like wanting to be better. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what my parents always taught me coming from like a family of firefighters. Like it was all, it's all about teamwork. A teammate doesn't like somebody that has an ego. Like mm -hmm. you want to be together. And so I've always kind of taken that like team approach of, um, you know, you're only as good as the guy next to you. And, and that's kind of what I think has made me get to where I am today is just because, you know, I've trusted my teammates, I've established relationships with my teammates, and I've always just put my head down and just worked hard and everything else, you know, God has a plan and, and you know, he'll, he'll send you in that direction that you need to go. Love it. Awesome. Yeah. Kyle, this was super fun. Yeah, bro. Absolutely. Nice meeting you. Thanks so much for, for coming on. You got it.